Good morning, and welcome to our service. We're so happy to have you here with us this morning. Let's begin by singing hymn number 310. I'll read the first verse. Sing, ye joyous children, sing. Glorious is the Christ our King. Truth has come again to earth through the lowly Savior's birth. Men and angels, anthems raise, hymns of joy and shouts of praise. Hear the angelic song again, peace on earth, good will to men. Sing, ye joyous children, sing. Glorious is the Christ our King. Hymn number 310. from the Bible. Proverbs. The preparations of the heart in man and the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. Commit thy works unto the Lord and thy thoughts shall be established. Everyone that is proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord. Though hands join in hand, he shall not be unpunished. By mercy and truth, iniquity is purged. And by the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. When a man's ways please the Lord, he maketh even his enemies to be at peace with him.
Let's pray for the congregation, first in silence, then we'll pray together the Lord's Prayer. I'll read the spiritual interpretation given in the Christian Science textbook. Our Father, which art in heaven. Our Father, Mother, God, all harmonious. Hallowed be thy name. Adorable one. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom is come. Thou art ever present. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Enable us to know, as in heaven, so on earth, God is omnipotent supreme. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us grace for today. Feed the famished affections. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And love is reflected in love. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And God leadeth us not into temptation, but delivereth us from sin, disease, and death. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. For God is infinite, all power, all life, truth, love, over all and all. Let's sing hymn number two. A glorious day is dawning, and o'er the waking earth, the heralds of the morning are springing into birth. In dark and hidden places, there shines the blessed light. The beam of truth displaces the darkness of the night. Hymn number two.
This church is a branch of the Mother Church, the first church of Christ Scientist in Boston, Massachusetts. We hold Sunday services at 11 a.m. and Wednesday testimony meetings at 7 p.m. The Wednesday testimony meeting includes singing hymns, reading from the Bible and the Christian Science textbook, and the opportunity to hear how people are living what they are learning from their study of Christian science. We also have services in Spanish, Sundays at 1 p.m. and Wednesdays at 5.30 p.m. All services will be held online and in person. We're following social distancing recommendations and encourage wearing a mask. For more information, please visit our website, thirdchurchnyc.com. We now offer Sunday school classes online for kids and teens. These free one-hour classes will be held each Sunday from 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. Students can request either a Spanish-speaking or English-speaking teacher. At Sunday school, students learn how much, how much God loves them and cares for them. They will also learn about the Bible characters and lessons, as well as the healing power of truth. If you know of children and teens who may be interested, please send us an email, thirdchurch at thirdchurchnyc.com. The solo sung by Jenny Lynn Stewart is called Christ, My Refuge. The words are from a poem written by Mary Baker Eddy, and the music is by Fenella Farrar. Oh! 
Thank you. Friends, the Bible and the Christian Science textbook are our only preachers. We shall now read scriptural texts and their correlative passages from our denominational, denominational textbook. These comprise our sermon. The canonical writings together with the word of our textbook, corroborating and explaining the Bible text in their spiritual import and application to all ages, past, present, and future, constitute a sermon undivorced, undivorced from truth, uncontaminated and unfettered by human hypotheses, and divinely authorized. Today's sermon can be found on page 48 of the full text edition of the Christian Science Quarterly Bible Lessons and page 16 of the Citation Edition. The subject is truth. The golden text is from Deuteronomy. Ascribe ye greatness to our God. He is the rock. His work is perfect, for all his ways are justice. A God of truth and without injustice. Righteous and upright is he. The responsive reading is from Psalms. My soul, Wait thou only upon God, for my expectation is from him. In God is my salvation and my glory. The rock of my strength and my refuge is in God. He hath remembered his mercy and his truth toward the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth hath, have seen the salvation of our God. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all the earth. Make a loud noise and rejoice and sing praise. Let the sea roar and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. Let the floods clap their hands. Let the hills be joyful together before the Lord, for he cometh to judge the earth. With righteousness shall he judge the world and the people with equity. All nations whom thou hast made shall come and worship before thee, O Lord, and shall glorify thy name. For thou art great, and doest wondrous things. Thou art God alone. Teach me thy way, O Lord. I will walk in thy truth. I will praise thee, O Lord my God, with all my heart, and I will glorify thy name forevermore. Thou, O Lord, art a God full of compassion and gracious, long-suffering, and plenteous in mercy and truth. The following citations comprise our sermon. The Bible, Psalms. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised, and his greatness is unsearchable. One generation shall praise thy works to another and shall declare thy mighty acts. I will speak of the glorious honor of thy majesty and of thy wondrous works. Rejoice in the Lord, O ye righteous, for praise is comely for the upright. For the word of the Lord is right, and all his works are done in truth. By the word of the Lord were the heavens made, and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. 
Show me thy ways, O Lord, teach me thy paths. Lead me in thy truth and teach me, for thou art the God of my salvation. On thee do I wait all the day. I'll read from the Science and Health with key to the scriptures. To grasp the reality and order of being in its science, you must begin by reckoning God as the divine principle of all that really is. Spirit, life, truth, love combine as one and are the scriptural names for God. All substance, intelligence, wisdom, being, immortality, cause, and effect belong to God. God fashions all things after his own likeness. Life is reflected in existence, truth in truthfulness, God in goodness, which impart their own peace and permanence. In science, truth is divine, and the infinite God can have no unlikeness. All the varied expressions of God reflect health, holiness, immortality, infinite life, truth, and love. Psalms. Good and upright is the Lord. The meek will he guide in judgment, and the meek will he teach his way. All the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth unto such as keep his covenant and his testimonies. Matthew. Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. And when he had called unto him his twelve disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. When Jesus came into the coasts of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. John, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. The question, what is truth, is answered by demonstration, by healing both disease and sin. And this demonstration shows that Christian healing confers the most health and makes the best men. Christianity, as Jesus taught it, was not a creed, nor a system of ceremonies, nor a special gift from a ritualistic Jehovah, but it was the demonstration of divine love, casting out error and healing the sick, not merely in the name of Christ or truth, but in demonstration of truth, as must be the case in the cycles of divine light. Jesus established his church and maintained his mission on a spiritual foundation of Christ healing. The question then, as now was, how did Jesus heal the sick? His answer to this question, the world rejected. He appealed to his students. Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? That is, who or what is it 
that is thus identified with casting out evils and healing the sick? They replied, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others Jeremiah's, or one of the prophets. Yearning to be understood, the master repeated, But whom say ye that I am? With his usual impetuosity, Simon replied for his brethren, and his reply sent, set forth a great fact. Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. That is, the Messiah is what thou hast declared, the Christ, the Spirit of God, of truth, life, and love, which heals mentally. Before this, the impetuous disciple had been called only by his common names, Simon Barjona, or son of Jonah. But now the master gave him a spiritual name in these words, and I say also unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock, the meaning of the Greek word petros, or stone, I will build my church, and the gates of hell, Hades, the underworld, or the grave, shall not prevail against it. In other words, Jesus purposed founding his society not on the personal Peter as a mortal, but on the God power which lay behind Peter's confession of the true Messiah. It was now evident to Peter that divine life, truth, and love, and not a human personality, was the healer of the sick and a rock a firm foundation in the realm of harmony. Jesus established in the Christian era the precedent for all Christianity, theology, and healing. First, in the list of Christian duties, he taught his followers the healing power of truth and love. John, then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, if ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he was come from God and went to God, Jesus said, Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. A new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another, as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye have love one to another. Jesus saith to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my lambs. He saith unto him, He saith to him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my sheep. He saith unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things, thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus saith unto him, feed my sheep. Divine truth, life, and love gave Jesus authority over sin, sickness, and death. His mission was to reveal the science of celestial being, to prove what God is and what he does for man. Jesus' teaching and practice of truth involved such a sacrifice as makes us admit its principle to be love. Sheep, innocence, inoffensiveness, those who follow their leader. 
What we most need is the prayer of fervent desire for growth in grace, expressed in patience, meekness, love, and good deeds. To keep the commandments of our master and follow his example is our proper debt to him and the only worthy evidence of our gratitude for all that he has done. Outward worship is not of itself sufficient to express loyal and heartfelt gratitude since he has said, if he love me, keep my commandments. It is possible, yea, it is the duty and privilege of every child, man, and woman to follow in some degree the example of the master by the demonstration of truth and life, of health and holiness. When man is governed by God, the ever-present mind who understands all things, man knows that with God all things are possible. The only way to this living truth which heals the sick is found in the science of divine mind as taught and demonstrated by Christ Jesus. Whatever inspires with wisdom, truth, or love, be it song, sermon, or science, blesses the human family with crumbs of comfort from Christ's table, feeding the hungry and giving living waters to the thirsty. My little children. Excuse me. First John. My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth, and hereby we know that we are of the truth and shall assure our hearts before him. We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. <clears throat> hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Second Corinthians, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Acts. As Peter passed throughout all quarters, he came down also to the saints which dwelt at Lydda. And there he found a certain man named Aeneas, which had kept his bed eight years and was sick of the palsy. And Peter said unto him, Aeneas, Jesus Christ maketh thee whole. Arise and make thy bed. And he arose immediately. And all that dwelt at Lydda and Saron saw him and turned to the Lord. Truth brings the elements of liberty. On its banner is the soul-inspired motto, slavery is abolished. The power of God brings deliverance to the captive. No power can withstand divine love. What is this supposed power which opposes itself to God? Whence cometh it? What is it that binds man with iron shackles to sin, sickness, and death? Whatever enslaves man is opposed to the divine government. Truth makes man free. A knowledge of error and of its operations must precede that understanding of truth, which destroys error, until the entire mortal material error finally disappears and the eternal verity, man created by and of spirit, is understood and recognized as the true likeness of his maker. When we come to have more faith in the truth of being than we have in error, more faith in spirit than in matter, more faith in living than in dying, more faith in God than in man, then no material suppositions can prevent us from healing the sick and destroying error. You should treat sickness mentally just as you would sin, except that you must not tell the patient that he is sin sick or give names to diseases, for such a course increases fear, the foundation of disease, and impresses more deeply the wrong mind picture. A Christian scientist's medicine is mind, the divine truth that makes man free. The victory will be on the patient's side 
only as immortal mind, through Christ truth, subdues the human belief in disease. Scientific healing has this advantage over other methods, that in it, truth controls error. From this fact arise its ethical as well as its physical effects. By the truthful arguments you employ, and especially by the spirit of truth and love which you entertain, you will heal the sick. Psalms. Oh, praise the Lord, all ye nations. Praise him, all ye people. For his merciful kindness is great toward us, and the truth of the Lord endureth forever. Praise ye the Lord. Mark. The first of all the commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And the second is like, namely this, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. Acts. There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian band, a devout man and one that feared God with all his house, which gave much alms to the people and prayed to God always. He saw in a vision, evidently, about the ninth hour of the day, an angel of God coming into him and saying unto him, Cornelius. And when he looked on him, he was afraid and said, What is it, Lord? And he said unto him, Thy prayers and thine alms are come up for memorial before God. And now send men to Joppa and call for one Simon, whose surname is Peter. And as Peter was coming in, Cornelius met him and fell down at his feet and worshipped him. But Peter took him up, saying, Stand up, I myself also am a man. And as he talked with him, he went in and found many that were come together. And he said unto them, Ye know how that it is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or come unto one of another nation. But God hath showed me that I should not call any man common or unclean. Of a truth, I perceive that God is no respecter of persons, but in every nation he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. First John. It is the spirit that beareth witness, because the spirit is truth. Spirit imparts the understanding which lifts consciousness and leads into all truth. You will learn that in Christian science, the first duty is to obey God, to have one mind, and to love another as yourself. The first demand of this science is, thou shalt have no other gods before me. This me is spirit. Therefore the commandment means this, thou shalt have no intelligence, no life, no substance, no truth, no love, but that which is spiritual. The second is like unto it, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. It should be thoroughly understood that all men have one mind, one God and Father, one life, truth, and love. One infinite God, good, unifies men and nations, constitutes the brotherhood of man, ends wars, fulfills the scripture, love thy neighbor as thyself, annihilates pagan and Christian idolatry, Whatever is wrong in social, civil, criminal, political, and religious codes equalizes the sexes, annuls the curse on man, and leaves nothing that can sin, suffer, be punished, or destroyed. 
with one father, even God, the whole family of man would be brethren. And with one mind and that God or good, the brotherhood of man would consist of love and truth and have unity of principle and spiritual power which constitute divine science. Second Samuel, thou art great, O Lord God, for there is none like thee, neither is there any God beside thee, according to all that we have heard with our ears. And with thy blessing, let the house of thy servant be blessed forever. Second Thessalonians, we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the spirit and belief of the truth. Second John, grace be with you, mercy and peace from God the Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the Father, in truth and love. Throughout all generations, both before and after the Christian era, the Christ, as the spiritual idea, the reflection of God, has come with some measure of power and grace to all prepared to receive Christ, truth, Grace and truth are potent beyond all other means and methods. Jesus said, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God, truth. During the offertory, if you would like to make a donation, we ask that you place your offering in the pouches on either side of the congregation, observing social distancing, or consider making a donation online. Let's sing hymn number 12. Arise, ye people, take your stand. Cast out your idols from the land. Above all doctrines, form, or creed is found the truth that meets your need. Christ's promise stands. They that believe, his works 
shall do his power receive hymn number 12 the scientific statement of being. There is no life, truth, intelligence, nor substance in matter. All is infinite mind and its infinite manifestation, for God is all in all. Spirit is immortal truth. Matter is mortal error. Spirit is the real and eternal. Matter is the unreal and temporal. Spirit is God, and man is his image and likeness. Therefore, man is not material. He is spiritual. And the correlative scripture from 1 John. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God, Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. And now the Lord show kindness and truth unto you. Amen. Amen. 